This is the Canvas Pro 16, the latest drawing display from Huion, and it's made some big jumps forward from last year's version. Today, we're checking it out. The video is sponsored by me. On my website, I collect all my reviews, even rank my favorite pen displays, iPads, tablets by size. It's designed to help you find the info you need before you buy. Full disclosure, the links I use on there are affiliate links to Amazon, so if you ever find any of my reviews helpful, clicking on one of those links before you buy gives a little bit of a commission from that sale back to me. It all adds up and it helps me buy more gear to review. You guys have been supporting this channel for years that way and I am super grateful. So thank you. Now, onto the review. The Canvas Pro 16 is a drawing display. What that means is you have to plug it into a Windows or a Mac computer and you can draw on it using the included pen. A common question I get in these reviews is, will it work on its own without a computer? The answer to that is no, it needs to be plugged into a computer to work. It's basically a second monitor and a pen. It's not a full blown computer. Now in the background of these reviews, I like to draw something. It helps me test it out and it shows you what the drawing tablet can do. And I just learned last week that Huion now now has a mascot, so it felt appropriate for me to draw the mascot in my style. I also feel like it's my duty to give the mascot a personality. I'm thinking it's like the gritty of Chinese tablet companies. Anyway, let's take a look at what comes in the box. There's the display itself, safely packaged to prevent scratches. You get the power cord, you get a three-way cable, one port for the power adapter, a USB and an HDMI input, and the other side is a USB-C port. There's a pen and also a little donut that you can set the pen in or on. And if you open up the donut, there are some extra pen nibs inside when your current ones wear out. There's also a drawing glove. Great for us sweaty folks whose hands would otherwise stick to the screen. And of course, things like the manual warranty card. They even included some stickers so you can label your hotkeys if you're so inclined. The big update here is the screen. It is a laminated display. This is quickly becoming the standard with drawing tablets in this industry. And it is a big jump in quality from older displays. A laminated display reduces the amount of space between the glass and the screen below it. On those older displays, there was a gap. So when your pen touched the glass, there was some separation between where your pen tip was on that glass and where you saw the cursor on the screen below it. And by removing that gap, it gives you a lot more accuracy. It helps when you're closing a shape or going back to add an extra line or retracing something. It's just more accurate. When I first got the display, plugged it in, set it up, my cursor was offset from the pen tip by maybe four or five pixels. So I just jumped in, recalibrated, and in a minute or two, the cursor was exactly where I wanted it to be. When moving the cursor around the screen, I find it's pretty accurate even when I'm moving around to the edge of the screen. On my Mac, occasionally it can be hard to activate my bottom menu when I scroll down there, but that's pretty common with most drawing tablets. The screen is HD, that's 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. It looks pretty good. A lot of screens are going to the higher density displays like the Wacom Cintiq Pro 16, which is full 4K. The Cintiq alternatives haven't gotten there yet. They're still keeping their lower res screen and I think mostly that's to keep the price down. And on a 15.6 inch screen like this one, it, it does look okay. It's good, not amazing, but okay, and acceptable at this price point. I love the 16 inch display size for drawing. The 13 inch version is fine, but the 16 inch gives you so much more room without being cumbersome or taking up all the space on your desk, anything bigger, and you really have to rearrange your workspace to fit it in. This thing can still be easy to move out of the way when you're not working on it. And I find that to be really convenient because I'm not illustrating and drawing all the time. They also bumped up the color spectrum of the display to 120% sRGB or 92% Adobe RGB. I'm really bad at telling the differences between colors. I thought the colors were good on the last version. I think they look good on this one too. Now the screen isn't glossy. It has an anti-glare coating on it. Actually, I'm not sure if it's a coating or if it's actually etched glass. Huion's site calls it chemically etched anti-glare glass. That sounds like etched glass, but I'm not sure if it is. Maybe this is just a semantics thing. Maybe it is an etched glass and I just can't tell. What I do know is it feels pretty good to draw on. Also, the coating they're using on it lets the screen colors come through without diffracting them in any way. Is diffracting a word? I don't know. It doesn't look grainy. One thing I did notice when I started drawing with it is that at first my stylus was sticking to the screen here and there. I could feel some grit underneath the stylus, but but as I used it more for maybe an hour or two, that started to go away. If you encounter that problem, just know that it will go away, or you could try washing your screen to see if you can get rid of it yourself without having to use it for a few hours first. Now, Huion claims that the screen doesn't get hot, and for the most part, they're right. I did notice a little warm spot along the top, and, and I say warm spot, it's definitely not hot. 
My hand never goes up that high, but if you flip the display around, turn it into left-handed mode, you're probably gonna notice that that is where your hand is going to rest. The build of the display itself feels premium. This is something I never thought I would say about a Huion product, but here we are. It's really thin. It weighs about three pounds, so it feels substantial. It's not light, but it's not heavy either. The back is a brushed aluminum, which just feels better than plastic. It feels more premium. It's got rubber grip so it doesn't slide around while it's sitting on your desk. It just, it feels good. I've used a lot of cheap tablets. This doesn't feel like a cheap tablet. It also feels very comfortable if you pull it off your desk and set it on your lap. I wouldn't call it portable necessarily because you'd need to take your laptop with you and all the cords and remember the pen. And it's also wider than most laptop bags. Even though the screen itself is 16 inches, there's a lot of extra space on the sides and along the top and the bottom. But at the same time, it's not super super cumbersome either. If you had a bag wide enough, you could take it with you. One thing to keep in mind is it doesn't come with a stand. There are some cheap ones over on Amazon that'll fit this pretty well. When I was recording the drawing that you're seeing behind me, I was laying it flat on my desk. I find that a very uncomfortable angle to draw at. It's a good angle to film at. But the rest of the time, I was using one of Artisol stands, which I had lying around from a different review, and it was way more comfortable to just prop it up in a, a, at a nice angle. Let's talk about this pen. The lines, they look really good. When Huion released this first generation of their pen last year around this time, maybe a little bit later in the summer, there were issues with it. So it's good to see that those have been cleaned up. In fact, they've been cleaned up dramatically. One thing you may have noticed is as I draw lines, you're going to see some lag behind it. That's not necessarily because of the tablet. It probably has more to do with the fact that I'm using an older laptop to test this on, and also that I'm drawing primarily in Photoshop, which is not the fastest and snappiest drawing program in the world. There is a faint wave here when I'm drawing with it. I, I can definitely tell when I'm looking for it, but my gosh, they have really closed the gap with Wacom, and, and these are on par with the XP Pen 16 Pro that I reviewed at the beginning of this year. Pressure flows smoothly. It's very easy to maintain and control. I always felt like I was in complete control of the pen. It was never like blowing out on the high end or doing something weird here and there when I was drawing quickly or drawing too slow. I'm used to drawing on a Cintiq Pro, and it felt very, very similar to me. The pen itself has 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is pretty standard nowadays. And also, I should point out, the pen is now battery free. Old Huion pens had batteries, even though those batteries lasted a really, really long time, it's still nice not to ever have to worry about that. Like I mentioned before, I've been using Wacom's Pro Pen 2 quite a bit over the last few months, and this feels really similar. The one thing that took some time to adjust to was that the nib of the pen moves just a little bit every time I set it down on the screen. It just feels a little bit jumpy, a little less natural, and, and to be honest, this is nitpicking, and it's something that I got used to. There's also tilt and rotation in this pen. I don't use tilt in my work, but from what I've seen, others say it's not as good as Wacom's, but it is here, and that's noteworthy because that's something that's pretty new to Huion's displays. The pen itself looks and feels almost identical to Wacom's pen. Same rubber grip feels, same button placement, same weight. Uh, I mentioned the donut earlier. You can set your pen across it or you can set your pen inside of it. And of course, it houses 10 extra nibs. So when yours wear down after drawing for a long period of time, you've got lots of replacements. There's also hotkeys along the side. It looks like there are eight, but there are actually only six here. That's because the one on the top is a power button and the one along the bottom is a function key. I've mentioned this with the smaller Huions that I've reviewed. I'm not a fan of the placement of the power button here. It's really easy to accidentally turn off your screen when you're trying to hit a shortcut. On the smaller displays, I did this all the time. I've gotten used to the fact that there is a power button there, so I've stopped accidentally turning off my tablet all the time, but I really wish they had spaced it, I don't know, further away from the other buttons or made it a different shape or just put it somewhere else so that wouldn't be happening as much. All these buttons are totally customizable, and like I said before, you can actually set this into left handed mode and turn the screen upside down. So if you want the shortcut keys to be on your right hand side, you can totally do that. I want to talk a little bit about the settings. I'm, I'm always a little bit afraid to talk about settings in software in general, because I'm always worried that I'm going to miss something like, hey, it's in there, Brad, you just didn't see it. So one thing to note, I found that Huion's drivers have really improved over the last few years. Since I started reviewing these plays, I, I used to have a lot of problems with it. Uh, one, installing it, and two, one problem I had with Huion over the years was that if I restarted my computer or unplugged the display and plugged it back in, it would stop working and I'd have to reinstall the drivers 
and I haven't really had that problem with the latest generation Huions. This continues the trend of being much easier to work with from the driver standpoint. Now, when it comes to drivers, your mileage may vary. Now, the overall interface and the settings, those have improved too over time. There's now a standard Huion settings app across all of their devices. I would really love to see them continue to push this further and further. Wacom does this sort of thing really well. For example, in Wacom settings, you can set up different apps to use different hotkey shortcuts. Here, I need to jump in and manually change what those hotkeys are every time I change a program. You can import and export configurations and, and take those couple extra steps and do that sort of thing, but Wacom just does it automatically, and that is so nice because I have completely different shortcuts that I'm using in Photoshop compared to what I'm using in Illustrator. I forgot to mention this little slider here in the middle. I I think by default, it's set to zoom in and out. So if you swipe up, it zooms out. You swipe down, it zooms in. By pressing the function key, you can change that to scrolling. And by pressing it again, you can change it to your brush sizes. So if you slide up, it's gonna make your brush bigger. Swipe down, it's gonna make it smaller. Outside of those three settings, it's not customizable. But for me, all I use it for really is zooming in and out and changing brush sizes. So I was totally cool with what's set up already here. There's one thing I keep noticing in these settings app is there's an option to enable Enable touch. I have no idea what this does. This tablet doesn't support such, so I'm not sure why it's here. This is why I don't talk about software. I'm going to look stupid. If anybody does know what it means, let me know down below in the comments. Now it's time to talk about pros and cons. The pros is this is really catching up to what Wacom is offering. There are some illustrators who are going to be able to tell the difference. If you've been using Wacom for years and know that pen and that technology inside and out, that's probably what you're going to prefer. But for me, I feel like they've really closed the gap when it comes to the pen quality and then you add in the laminated display. This is a really great step up. I think the real question is, why would you pick up the Wacom Cintiq Pro 16 or the Wacom Cintiq 16 over this? I think that's a great question. The screen on this is laminated, so it's better than the normal Cintiq 16 without the word Pro at the end of it. The Cintiq 16 Pro, however, has a much higher resolution. Also has edge to edge etched glass, but you're losing the express keys. In fact, you're losing express keys on all of the Cintiqs nowadays. I think the reason you'd pick up Wacom over something like this is just because Wacom is a more established brand. They tend to have better customer service, they have better settings, they have better software. I feel like the pens at this point are really close. Wacom's a little bit better. And I think for a lot of illustrators and artists who really love Wacom's tech, they already know it. That's what they're going for. That's what they want and that's what they need. For me and my money, that is a this is a tough call because I think this is a really great product. I forgot to touch on the cons. That's because at this price, I really don't see many. I have preferences, like I'd like to see the settings get deeper. I wish the pen wasn't as jumpy at the tip. I would love to see the power button move to a more logical place, but I think this is Huion's best product that they're offering right now. It's really impressive. The other product I've reviewed this year that I absolutely absolutely love was the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro. Came out in January, February this year. And I have to say, when, when I compare these two things, they're the same size. You got a lot of the same features, the laminated screen, and you've got great pen quality in both. So if you're trying to decide between those two, they're neck and neck. Spec-wise, they're the same. Pen quality, drawing experience, everything. Which one should you pick? I don't know. Flip a coin? It used to be with these drawing displays, you were making a trade-off. Save a lot of money, but you were losing a lot of quality. And now it feels like you're saving a lot of money and you're not compromising on quality nearly as much as you used to. I guess the good news here is if you're trying to choose between this and XP Pen, they're both great. Whichever one you go with, you're getting something solid. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, do whatever it is that you do on YouTube, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.